Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and I am genuinely so excited because today is the first day in my wedding week series. So every weekday for the rest of this week, I'm gonna be uploading a wedding related video. And to make it even better, the last upload in this week will be our official wedding video. I know you guys have been waiting so long for this and I'm really excited to finally share it with you. We've been married for four months now, which is crazy. And we have had the video for a little while, but we just wanted to make sure that we were able to enjoy it a little bit first and also just share it with a few close friends and family before we posted it to the world but I am so excited for you guys to see that and it makes me so happy that you guys will be able to kind of see a glimpse into what our day was really like because it was seriously the happiest day of my life and I think you can really see that through the video as well but now I'm just getting sidetracked back to this video today I'm going to be showing you guys everything that I thrifted and DIY'd for our wedding I saw Kai and Tilson film one of these and I found it really really helpful and I truly believe that you can save so much money by thrifting and DIYing things for your wedding I know for a fact that we saved thousands of dollars by doing things the way that we did so of course I want to share those tips with you so I do have things that I thrifted for our wedding that we used at our wedding but I also have things that I've thrifted just in general that I think you could use at a wedding so let's start off with the things that I used at our wedding the thing that I thrifted the most of was definitely glass jars just to put things into perspective we had three really long tables at our wedding and originally I was planning to have like greenery all down the center of those tables and I got a few quotes for how much that would cost to get that professionally done by a florist and all of the ones that I spoke to had like cost per meter and they were all around like the $30 mark and all of our tables were over 10 meters long and then if you included the bridal table on top of that it was going to cost us over a thousand dollars for just the greenery going down the center of the tables and for us a big deciding factor in terms of whether we wanted to spend the money on things or not for our wedding was will this make someone's experience at our wedding better and for me personally I just didn't think that having leaves in the middle of a table would make someone enjoy my wedding more. So we went back, we replanned, and we decided to do white table runners and lots and lots of candles. And I honestly love how it turned out. I really don't think the photos do it justice. I think it looked better in person, especially once it got darker outside and the candles were lighting up the whole reception. It was stunning. But all I did was I went to thrift stores and I found a few thrift stores that sell mismatched glasses like these ones for 20 cents each. So I just got the glasses, I got a tea light, popped the tea light in, put them on the tables, and that was done. It's really hard to show you, but I got all different shapes and sizes. Again, like I said, all of these were either 20 cents or 50 cents. I think I bought a couple for a dollar that were a little bit more interesting, just to switch things up again. But I loved having all the different shapes and sizes on the tables. And if you're going to do this, one tip that I would give you is to buy the tea lights that have an extended, I don't know what it's called, extended lighting period. So these ones were a bit taller than the average tea light. Most tea lights are like half the size of this and have, I don't know, maybe like a four hour burning period or something. I don't actually know, two hours maybe. But I'm pretty sure I got the ones that had like an eight hour limit. So these weren't lit until like four or 5 p.m. But that meant that they wouldn't burn out for the rest of the night. So that was a really great tip. And yes, it was a little bit more expensive, but tea lights are so inexpensive. I think it cost me $10 for a pack of 100, maybe $20, I don't know. But it was just way more inexpensive than our original plan. I I would say our wedding theme was very simple, very minimal, very clean looking. That was the aim. One of the reasons why we went for that style was because it kind of just suits our personality. We're not super boho, we're not super rustic, and having a really simple, clean, minimal looking style just suited the style of our wedding, our venue, everything very very well but the second reason we did it that way is because it is way cheaper to have a minimal style because you just don't need as many things so we just had white table runners which I'll explain in a sec and the candles and that was it I had a range of tea light candles and bigger pillar candles and all of the pillar candles that I used were actually borrowed from my friend Gabby who had been married pretty much exactly a year prior to me but since her wedding she's actually been able to borrow them out to other people I know she borrowed them out for a 21st obviously I used them for my wedding these these pillar candles last for so long so if you know someone who's used them at their wedding or event or something ask if they still have them they might have them in their shed or something that you can borrow or have a look on Facebook marketplace people are selling wedding stuff there all the time and I've actually seen a lot of these bigger candles at op shops so if you start looking early enough I definitely think you'd be able to find enough for your own wedding so that was definitely the main thing that I thrifted but apart from that I also used baskets this one here I think I got for about three dollars from an op shop and I use this to store all of the film for our Polaroid 
Polaroid camera. I would definitely recommend hiding them away in some sort of box or basket or whatever it may be because those little silver packets aren't the prettiest thing to display on like a little cards and gifts table. So if you can find a cute way to store it, that's really good. Another option would be like this. You could have all the film lying across this one. This one was a dollar. I also just have so many baskets that I thrifted. These are just like in my house now. These weren't necessarily ones that I used at my wedding, but you can find so many great baskets. This one has a little lid. I think it's originally from Ikea, but these are so great. And of course you can repurpose them after your wedding as well. We love a good basket find. Another thing that I used at my wedding were vases that I painted. So this was originally just like a clear glass and I just painted it to be white. And this actually held all of our sparklers for our sparkler send off. So I put a little bit of newspaper at the bottom to to prop them up a bit so they stood up a bit more and it was great because it could be a part of the display while still looking a lot cuter than just like sparklers sitting there you could definitely put like sparklers lying down in a basket or something that could look really cute as well and now i just use this as decor in my house but here are some other vases that i have just painted and of course you could use these to have flower arrangements in use them at a centerpiece of your table this is not the color scheme that my wedding was we just had like white to everything but this is just something i painted to have in our house so like i said you can use it for your wedding but then you can use it in your apartment or your house afterwards and I love these. This is another cute piece that I thrifted a couple years ago and this could definitely be cute decor or even just functional at your wedding depending on how DIY you're going. Our wedding venue was very inclusive so I didn't have to shop for things like glassware, napkins, cutlery, all of that sort of stuff but those could also be found at op shops as well. I think those are all the thrifted things that I used at my wedding but I want to show you a couple other things that I have thrifted either since then or before then that maybe I didn't need at my wedding but I think you could use at your First things are these glass, are these, they're not a canister are they? I forget the word when they're meant for alcohol, but I think these could be beautiful as centerpieces or just decor pieces in your wedding. This one has a little lid, but you could take this out and put flowers in there too. You could paint these if you wanted to as well. It just depends what kind of look you're going for for your wedding. Photo frames are another great thing that you can find at op shops. I've seen a lot of people at weddings or engagement parties like to display like photos of them as a couple. We didn't do that, but I've seen a lot of people do it and definitely a great way to save money. Another thing that I find at op shops all the time are just little trinket bowls and things. I don't know how to explain it any better, but I have this beautiful wooden one, another little wooden one. I just use this to store jewelry now, but of course you could use this to either store your jewelry on the day of the wedding or as little photo props when they're doing like the little details shots. That could be really cute. I have this little wooden one. I have this little ceramic one. I think the colors in this are really beautiful and really suit the whole like boho, dried flower, huge theme at the moment. And this kind of style is like everywhere in op shops in Australia. So those are definitely really great pieces that you could get if you're trying to save money but want kind of like nice trinkety kind of bowls or things. I'm sure you could use them for many other things as well, but those are the main things I thought of. Moving on to the things that I DIY'd. I haven't actually filmed it yet, but I think there will be a video coming later this week that will show you how I DIY'd some of these things. But I just wanted to show you the things that I DIY because I think it could give you guys inspiration for things that you can DIY. Maybe you didn't know you could DIY it, but it's really easy, whatever it may be. So let me show you those. First thing I will say is I didn't have a Cricut machine when I got married. I got one afterwards, but if you do have a Cricut machine, you could do literally so many DIYs with that for your wedding. It will be so helpful. Do I think it's worth buying a Cricut machine just for your wedding? Potentially. I'm being dead serious. Yes, Cricut machines are expensive, but wedding signs and wedding things are very expensive also. So yes, you could save money in the long run, but I do think it's worth weighing it up and kind of figuring out how many things you want to DIY and if you have enough, definitely go for a Cricut machine, but I did not have one at the time. So let me show you some of the things I did. Firstly, we have this little sign. This was a $3 sign from Kmart. I stained it with a wood stain that I already had to stain some of the other signs that I did. And I just wrote over it in a white pen in calligraphy. To be completely honest, don't love how this turned out. I think I could have done better. I didn't actually end up using this at the wedding. I used it at some other events like bridal shower and stuff like that. But this is a really great option if you want a cheap sign. Speaking of signs, I did DIY those as well. We only had two so it wasn't anything major. I just had a really simple wooden welcome sign. We borrowed all of the easels from our wedding venue so that was really handy. We didn't have to buy any of those but yeah I made that welcome sign and I also made our seating chart and I'm really glad that I DIY those signs. We saved a lot of money but in saying that they can be really tedious if you're not super 
confident in your ability, maybe it is better to get a professional to do them. There are some incredible small businesses who do them. And I know Vista Print prints signs as well. So that is a really easy option. Another sign that I DIY'd was this little timeline sign that I put on our cards and gifts table, I'm pretty sure. So this just simply shows when things were happening on the wedding day. So personally, I think this is a great addition to have at your wedding day. It lets people know when they can expect things to happen, especially important events like the bridal party entry or the first dance or the cake cutting, whatever it may be. But especially if you have a time that you are planning to leave by. At our venue, we actually had a time that we had to be out by and have everything cleaned up by. So we wanted to make sure that everyone knew when we as a couple were leaving so they could make sure they said goodbyes and stuff before then if they wanted to. And it wasn't just like a shock in the middle of dancing when people were like, okay, the bride and groom are leaving now, see ya. So I think that's a really great tip. I just made this on Canva, printed it out at Officeworks on nicer paper and framed it in a, I don't know, $10 Kmart frame, maybe $8. Whole thing total definitely cost me under $10. So definitely a really cheap way to do that. And I just used the same fonts and stuff to make a little sign for our bar, just to let people know which drinks were under our bar tab. So they could obviously enjoy those. Another thing that I DIY'd were our table numbers. These were super simple. This was just a white glass frame that I got from Target. I don't think they sell these exact ones anymore, but I'm sure you could find something similar if you're wanting one. And then I just printed out the writing and taped it to the back of the glass. I went over it in a white paint pen and it was all done. So we had three of these just for our really long tables and I think they turned out really professional looking, really nice looking, very happy with those. I also made personalized hangers for all my bridesmaids. This is actually one that I made for my friend Beck's wedding when I was part of her wedding and I used my Cricut machine to cut out the name on this one. So that is what it can look like if you have a Cricut. <laughs> like I said, for my wedding, I didn't have a Cricut, so I just freehanded it with a white paint pen. I used those things so much, went through so many of them. But again, just an easy way to do something very inexpensively, but make it still look a little bit special. A really good tip is if you don't have a Cricut machine, you can still purchase vinyl stickers from a lot of Etsy stores, and you can do it really cheap. I'm pretty sure you can get them for like around a dollar each, depending on the size you want, of course. I actually got some stickers made by a family friend. I got one for our wishing well. We just went with L plus R and I think it looked really classy, really simple, really elegant. And I also got one made for our guest book that I just got from Kmart. It was like a $10 scrapbook. I put the sticker on top. I don't have a photo of that because that is like the one thing that did have our last name on it. But that is a really inexpensive way of getting like a personalized guest book. As for the table runners, I am like so proud of this. I saw on Pinterest that everyone had these beautiful white table runners and I was like, how can I recreate this? Looked into professional styling, looked into how much it would cost to rent that kind of stuff and it was actually pretty decent pricing especially because if you ruin it like anyone spills a drink on it if you get candle wax on it you you lose a lot of money so I went into spotlight and I scoured that place and I ended up in the curtain material section and in the clearance section of the curtain material section and I was able to find pretty plain white tool kind of material I don't really know I don't know if chul is the right word. Just like sheer curtain material for around $3 a meter. And so I purchased like 36 meters of that. I did have to end up getting two different types of material and one was a little bit more expensive because I didn't have 36 meters of the like clearance one. And so I think in total it cost me a hundred and something dollars, which was way cheaper than I found anywhere else. And it was perfect. It looked amazing. I actually had one of the staff members from my venue who obviously like see hundreds of weddings. And she was like, oh my gosh, where did you get these table runners from? And I was like, oh, clearance section at Spotlight. And she was like, you do not realize how much money you've saved and how similar it looks to the professionals. And I was like, thank you so much. That is a huge compliment. For those asking, I do not have those table runners anymore. I've had a few DMs about it. I'm sorry. I've already passed them on to someone else, but I'm sure you could do something very similar for a very similar price point. I also DIY'd all of our little like place cards that had people's names on them. I just wrote on them in calligraphy. To be honest, I feel like we could have done this a little bit cuter. I've seen so many really cool ways that people do it now. But if you want to do it really inexpensively, that was a great way. I just bought the place cards from Officeworks for like $4 for a pack of, I don't even know, 50 or something. And all of the menus that we had on everyone's place, we ordered them from Vistaprint. Really inexpensive, looks so professional. And I just went out to the flower markets the day before the wedding and I bought like two big bunches of olive brand and my bridesmaids and I just cut that up the night before the wedding so everyone had a little piece of olive branch on their place where they were sitting and I feel like that really tied in the greenery so although I didn't spend a thousand dollars on the greenery that went down the tables I feel like we still got 
the effect we were looking for, which I loved. Okay, I feel like I just talked for three hours, <laughs> but that is everything that I have to share with you guys today. I hope this was somewhat helpful if you're planning a wedding or even just any kind of other event. If you're getting married anytime soon, I would definitely recommend just checking out all of your local op shops. Just go every like week or two weeks and just see what they have because you can find some absolutely incredible deals. And like I said, we saved thousands of dollars by not doing professional styling and just thrifting everything. DIYing everything and I think it still turned out absolutely stunning. If you want to see any of my wedding prep videos or any other wedding related videos I will link the playlist down below otherwise I'll link the videos if I can't do that. If you haven't already make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any of the other wedding content that is coming up this week especially that wedding video. I know you guys are going to be so excited about that and I'm so excited to share it with you but anyway I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you tomorrow with another wedding related video. Goodbye.